Trancat Night Special Guest Podcast right here on the Trancat Night Network website. Folks, today is uh, March 26th, 2021. I hope you all are having a very wonderful and blessed day. As always, we keep the programming moving along Monday through Saturday, folks, typically three or four guests every day, some some days more. Oh, we had one day last week where I had six guests on one day. That was a doozy of a day. Uh, but we've got a prolific uh, lineup of podcasts for you today. We've got John Potash. Coming on the show a little bit later today, we've got E.J. Snyder from Naked and Afraid. I've got to get a premium podcast up. Uh, for those looking for the Misha Johnson podcast, we had to reschedule that one. I'm hoping to get that one done over the next few weeks, but Misha is uh, working on her doctorates in uh, theology, so I'm uh, trying to work around her schedule. We just couldn't make it happen this morning, so in any case, we will make it happen over the next few weeks. Now, someone who's been joining us quite regularly also joined us. Uh, for the most, uh, one of the most recent of a pod, uh, the um, web conferences, Scared or Prepared, Survive and Thrive. Stefan Verstappen joins us from China Strategies, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about surviving mass psychosis, and uh, we'll probably get our feet wet in regards to uh, providing more parameters for forming uh, communities, which is uh, an area that we, of course, are very much dialed into here at Trancat Night. So before we hand it over to Stefan, we have to make mention of our sponsors, PlentyWellness.com. Plenty Wellness is one of the first and highest rated CBD companies in the United States that offer free consultations to educate consumers and have proprietary genetic research to help you get the most from your CBD products. They work directly with a licensed medical do- uh, doctor to thoroughly test each of their products to ensure results and quality. CBD is not uh, marijuana. It does not have psychoactive properties. And if you feel this is in your wheelhouse, please do take advantage of it. Plentywellness.com. Also, prolific Catholic outlet, jacksberry.com, loaded full of information. There's a page where you can add your prayer intentions. Highly encourage you to take advantage of that. Seven Sorrows and Mary section with a Father Voigt reflection. That's jacksbury.com, B-U-R-Y.com. We also have a new uh, sponsor this month, Genesis Apparel, which is located in Charlotte, North Carolina. I talked to David on the phone a few weeks or so ago because he's putting together a Tradcat Night page for those who are looking for uh, some merchandise. Again, I'm not profiting off of this. I'm just trying to help David out, actually, with his business. And for those who have been asking where they could get some Tradcat Night uh, merchandise so they could go out and show some support, uh, this is going to be the avenue. I'll get that link to you hopefully over the next week or so. But Genesis Apparel provides wholesale pricing on custom shirts and hoodies starting at $4.50 a shirt, folks. That's ridiculously cheap cheap great quality though still they also provide custom packaging at little no cost to you again the website is genesisapparel.us our newest sponsor and our exclusive uh sponsor for the web conferences going forward the next five is gloryandshine.com it's a great outlet um they put their passion and love for jesus christ and the universal church into action by creating uh natural and supernatural self-care products um, every item is crafted with deep intention of holding a vision while sharing the gospel through ordinary acts of everyday life. That's gloryandshine.com, folks. I received some complimentary copies from uh, Richard. Or Richard Gratzinger is the man behind uh, that company, and they truly are fantastic, especially uh, men with beards. He gave me some uh, some some beard uh, items, I, I guess you would call them. I'm not quite exactly sure how to call it, but they truly are fantastic. Uh, so get on over to gloryandshine.com and check it on out. Three Days of Darkness kits. As always, contact Kathleen Lowe. Kathleen Aloni at gmail.com. It's the prayer, sacramentals, herbs in accordance with Catholic prophecy. And last but not least, Chris Gagne is inviting all those uh, who are Catholic and those who are are like-minded in this area to remember those who have gone before us. Uh, Keep Chris in your prayers. He's uh, uh, truly an outstanding gentleman. He's been with me since the get-go. He's one of the originals to my work way before Tradcat Night was Tradcat Night and Defeat Modernism when I was just kind of out and about uh, under my own uh, name. Uh, he was uh, one of the original followers to this uh, work. So in any case, folks, we're going to get the programming moving with Stefan. Stefan, thanks so much for joining the show. Uh, I know we were kind of briefly talking off air in regards to how we should set this one up. And I uh, I think we should first start off with uh, giving uh, some tidbits here in regards to surviving mass psychosis. And then we'll, we'll kind of transition and, and, and maybe give a few uh, pointers in regards to forming communities and we'll see where we're at and we'll pick up uh, next month <laughs> hey eric how's it going good good doing well man enjoying the apocalypse <laughs> yeah of course man love it eagles get excited for the storm that's yes. how we said yeah what's that what's that uh, uh that saying the devil says you will not survive the storm and the warrior replies i am the storm that's it that's the mentality we have to have yeah yeah well the 
the, the first topic I wanted to talk about is a preview of a video script I'm working on now called How to Survive Mass Psychosis. Because, you know, when you talk to people these days, I mean, when you talk to normal people. <laughs> <laughs> right. Few and like, far between, but. <laughs> like, I don't even know what to say is normal anymore. Uh, sane people, awake people, intelligent people. When you talk to them, everybody will tell you the same thing. The world has gone crazy. Mm -hmm. And, well, we think that's a metaphor that, you know, you don't like the way things are going. Or, but, no, it's actually a factual statement. The world has literally gone crazy. So I'd like to open up with a short fable, if I may. Mm, okay. Okay, there was once a tiny kingdom that was ruled over by a noble and virtuous king. And all the people in the kingdom were happy and prosperous and enjoyed life. But there was a witch that was envious of the people. And because, as you know, psychopaths hate to see people happy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the witch devised a scheme. She wanted to destroy the kingdom, and she, and she wanted to destroy the happy people. So one night she crept into the village, and in the village there was one well from which everyone drank, and she poisoned the well. And everyone who drank from the well became insane. Well, a couple of days later, everyone had drunk from the well, and everybody in the kingdom was now completely insane, except for the king, who had his own private well in his castle. Then, a few days later, the people of the kingdom started whispering and gossiping amongst each other, saying, the king is insane. Mm. And how can we let ourselves be ruled by a king that is insane? And soon they marched on the, on, on the castle with pitchforks and torches and yelling and screaming and breaking windows and looting. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Saying, the king is insane, we must depose the king. So the king f figured out what had happened and that the witch had poisoned the well. And so late one night when no one was around, he went to the well and he drank a large cup of water. The next day, the king went insane, and all the people of the kingdom rejoiced, saying, Praise the Lord, the king has become sane again. <laughs> and that's the story. Now, in this story, let's make one thing clear. The witch is communism. The witch is socialism, Marxism, Leninism, communism. And it has poisoned our society to such a degree that our entire society has gone insane. And this has been written about by many philosophers throughout history. Even uh, Friedrich Nietzsche uh, wrote that uh, an insane person is a rarity among a population, but insanity is common among groups, ideologies, and governments. Well, he was right. Uh, so it's rare that you're going to find somebody in, in society that is truly insane. There are people like that. But the true insanity comes from our culture and from our society. And Carl Jung also wrote about it. Um, <clears throat> if I can quote from Carl Jung from his book, The Symbolic Life, he said that when mass psychosis occurs, and he called it... Um, a, a psychic epidemic when mass psychosis occurs the results are devastating individuals who make up the infected society become morally and spiritually inferior they sink unconsciously to an inferior intellectual level they become more unreasonable uh, irresponsible emotional erratic and unreliable and worst of all they will commit crimes that the individual alone would never commit. But when committed by a group, they stand by and applaud. So we can see that now. Um, 
the communism that has infected our society has literally driven everyone insane. And so I don't know about you, Eric, but I feel like the king in the story. You know, you're the last sane person <laughs> on the planet, and everybody around you is pointing their finger saying, Eric's gone insane. Mm -hmm. Steph has gone insane. We have to do something about Eric and Steph because they're obviously insane. <laughs> Yeah. And this, this no, but this is the society we're in. This is not a metaphor. This is not just a, you know. It's just not. It's not a rant or a bitch fest. Look, these people around us are nuts. Now, what mass <laughs> psychosis means? Psychosis means the inability to perceive reality. So, what we see now is, you know, the communists and the liberal, liberals and the leftists. Um. They have no concept of reality. It's obvious. You you cannot reason with them. You cannot talk to them. You cannot offer them uh, a logical, rational argument. They're incapable of that because they cannot perceive reality. And when you cannot perceive reality, that is the ultimate diagnosis of madness. So now we're in a bad situation, Eric. You know, the world is going down the tubes. We need to form communities to survive, which we'll talk about in a minute. But how can we form communities of crazy people? You can't. It's like herding cats. I always tell people I'm, I'm training my cats to pull a dog sled. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it's not working out too well. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. no, this is uh, this is interesting because uh, I've been using a quote from one of the fathers in the Catholic Church, um, and I call it the inversion. I mean, like everything is just flip flopped uh, inside out, so to speak, and lies uh, lies are now being labeled as truth. Truth is, uh, you know, now being called lies. If you go out into the the mainstream world and you're not wearing a, a mask, you're looked at like you're nuts. Uh, if when you talk about vaccines, still, I would I would argue the vast majority are still thinking that that's uh, a good idea. Um, but St. Anthony the Great in the Catholic Church had this to say in regards to it, like a sign at the end. He said, a time is coming when men will go mad. And when they see someone who is not mad, they will attack him saying, you are mad and you are not like us. Uh, so it's very similar to what uh, the same sentiments that you are expressing here. And I, I couldn't have said it any better. Uh, and people just people have checked out of reality. Like maybe we could talk about that from a philosophical standpoint, Stefan, in regards to why people have uh, checked out. You know, many people going to pills, to porn, to alcohol. How about even like video games or like virtual reality, sort of like checking out of like the real world for a few hours to play some video games. I mean, people just don't want to deal with reality these days. No, exactly. And uh, all those are symptoms of a mad society, you know, all of it, the, the, the suicide rate, the addiction rate, the overdose rate, the alcoholic rate, the, and then the violence, too. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the answer to that. Carl Jung, again, went in describing what he called uh, a, psychic, a, a psychic epidemic or what we call mass psychosis, said that you need two prerequisites for mass psychosis to take place. The first prerequisite is that the majority of people have to be ignorant. Now, we have seen the communists march through the institution for the last 60 years, and I would argue longer than that, that has created an educational system that produces idiots. Mm. That's the purpose of public schools, to produce people that cannot think for themselves, that have no idea of science. You know, I, I was... I've always been a big science buff since I was a little kid. I mean, I was, you know, doing chemical experiments when I was six years old. I was really kind of a science prodigy. And um, not that I'm into sciences now, but it's always been a, a, a favorite topic of mine. And I do have some understanding of how science works. And when I hear all these, you know, pro-maskers, pro-vaxxers talking about, oh, people don't follow the science. Well, no. <laughs> actually, you're wrong. You mm -hmm. don't follow the science. The mass majority of people that come out of our educational system have no idea about science. They know nothing. They get suckered into all kinds of scams and phony philosophical pursuits and because they don't understand. But that's that was the goal of education. So everybody that sent their kids to school, I personally think you are guilty of child abuse because mm. they are 
The modern educational system is a monstrosity. It's a demonic construction. You take Mm -hmm. children, you know, from the age of six or earlier, and children's brains are a sponge. By the time they're 12 years old, they could have a medical degree because their ability to learn is at a heightened rate. So what you can teach children between six and 18 I mean, there's no reason why you, why everybody that does, comes out of high school shouldn't have two degrees, a medical degree and a degree in, say, philosophy, mm-hmm. because our brains are built that way. We're meant to learn, and it goes into hyperdrive from the moment we're born. We learn, we learn, we learn. The brain is very plastic at that stage in our development, and we are meant to absorb as much knowledge. Now, what we do then is we take these hungry sponge brains and we stick them in a box where they are not given any real information or any stimulus to learn. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, you you feed them this nonsense for eight years. By the time they're 18, the brain starts to solidify more. It becomes harder to learn things. But the fact is that it's already been... It's already been messed with the brain. It's like you you reduced the RAM on a computer. You know, you took a <laughs> hard drive and you took out your computer and all, which is quite as an operating system, and it can't do anything on its own. This is what the educational system does to us. So now we have four, five generations of people that have been processed through this intellectual meat grinder called an educational system, <laughs> out, and they're morons. They are morons. I'm sorry to say this. I know it sounds like I'm being superior or, you know, never criticize every, you know, your stupidity is valid too. No, it's not. <clears throat> your stupidity is a threat to mankind. Mm. It's a threat to all humanity, which is what Carl Jung says, that mass psychosis is the greatest threat to man, greater than natural disasters, greater than pandemics, greater than wars. Mm. And this is Carl Jung. He's writing about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, he hit it right on, hit the nail on the head. So, okay, the first prerequisite has been fulfilled. Mass education. People are morons. That's all there's to it. You can't, you know, you can't teach them anymore because the point at which, you know, in human development, doors open and then they close. For example, if you have a child and they never hear language, by the time they're six years old, they will never be able to speak because the door for learning language opens from the age of one and it closes around four or five years. And if they don't learn how to speak in the first four years of life, they never will. And it's the same thing with our educational system. The door to rational, critical, self-reliant thinking is open for a short while. And it's only open... During that period where they're stuck in these boxes, these educational boxes, and then once the door closes, they can't learn it. You Mm. can't teach them how to critically think. Once they're 21, if they haven't learned it by then, they never will. So this is the first prerequisite. Now, the second prerequisite that Carl Jung wrote in order to have mass psychosis is fear. Look at our society. It is unending fear, porn, Mm -hmm. the propaganda. Be afraid of this. Be afraid of that. It has never stopped. That's why it's on the news. It's in the movies. It's in the books. It's in magazines. It's full media spectrum fear all the time. And Carl Jung said that fear is more dangerous than anger. And angry people, they might act out of anger and and, and out of violence, but people that are afraid act out of madness. Hmm. And you cannot predict the outcome of madness other than it will destroy our society. And here's the third thing that Carl Jung wrote. He said, mass psychosis, once it's taken hold of a society, cannot be cured. So here we are, Eric. Yeah, here, here we are, 2021. I don't know if you saw this headline. Bill Gates was saying uh, normalcy would return by 2022, and I got a good chuckle out of that one. I had a few uh, 
uh, a few uh, food items fly out of my mouth when I read that uh, headline because uh, it's completely comical. Uh, but as a part of that that first uh, area that you were talking about too, I mean, the education continues on even after leaving, uh, you know, the, the the school system. I mean, take a look at what most people are sitting in front of on a nightly basis with the TV. Maybe we could talk about that, uh, Stefan. My goodness, uh, uh, the propaganda that's on the TV and uh, uh, the mainstream media, of course, wanting their narratives to get across and. We're having to have to deal with uh, censorship. We we can't get out our perspectives too. So I, I think there's an element too of 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 uh, controlling the narrative too as well. It's not they don't want competing uh, opinions out there. Uh, they want their opinion to be solidified. You have to agree with it. If you don't, then you're then you are labeled as a madman. Like how dare you could go against our uh, you know our science and and our belief structure. That's that's uh, I think that's an area worth uh, considering too as well. Sure. Well, of course, the, you know, we our society has been run by psychopaths for over 100 years. So this is natural. Um, you know, if the public education hasn't destroyed the minds of young people enough, even when they're out of it, the rest of the, you know, the culture, the popular culture continues to programming. And TV is by far the single most evil, demonic, insane uh, device that has ever been constructed, I recommend people never watch TV. Never, ever. ever. Don't turn it on. Don't watch anything. Because I'll tell you why. You know, I years ago I read a book called um, Methods of Persuasion by uh, a professor something brown, I believe it was. And we well, talked about propaganda. You know, how propaganda works and, and, and uh, how to inflict it on people. And when so I have an awareness of propaganda. I get it when when people are bullshitting me. I know it. I <laughs> sense it. I smell it. And when I turn on the TV, the stench is overwhelming. It's in everything. The propaganda is in the TV shows. It's in the comedies. It's in the it's in the stand up uh, late night TV. It's in the awards shows. It's in the movies. It's in the television series. It's in the commercials. Even the commercials have this propaganda. And the danger of TV is we know that the flicker rate of the TV screen induces people to go into what's known as a theta wavelength. Um, Our brains function at different frequencies. And the theta frequency is one in which very similar to being under hypnosis. Yeah. So even if you do have a critical mind and you're able to, you know, for the most part, filter out the propaganda through your rational thinking, the fact is that you watch it for long enough, you go into the theta state, and even though you can filter out some of the propaganda, a lot of it gets through and it beds itself in your subconscious. And I think this is the cause of the uh, cognitive dissonance, mm. where, whereby I see people that I think are awake, right? I see people that know 9-11 was an inside job and, you know, know about all the false flags and know that the science behind our Lord and Savior, Bill Gates, <laughs> is flawed. I mean, the guy thinks he's God, for Christ's sakes. I mean, talk about a case study and group delusional megamania oh my god anyways that but the cognitive dissonance occurs when that propaganda has seeped through your conscious barrier and embedded itself so i see people that i think are awake they know about the you know conspiracy theories they know the banks rule the world they know about the psychopaths they know everything and then they go out and get the vaccine (laughs) <laughs> right 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 now i had a few of my I was, i've been mentioning this over the past uh week or so i had a few of my guests actually get it unfortunately who i would consider to be pretty smart people daniel d martino one of the the leading uh economists she's featured like on fox news or what i mean she's a very smart lady she's she written a book and the fed she's left the fed she's been trying to expose uh the fed but she went out and got it and i got i heard from her pr person earlier this uh, earlier this week was it earlier this week no it was earlier last week it might have been two weeks ago or so ago and said listen daniel just got the vaccine and she's like really not doing well and i was like oh man like my heart just sunk you know what i mean so it's you know it's sucking people in 
uh, you know, it's crazy uh, how group dynamics works, how social media works, how uh, not well, not only TV too, it's social media too. That's oh, yeah. kind of like that's like the new thing, right? Yeah, no, social media, TV, same thing. You know, it's uh, well, we're we're herd animals, and because we're herd animals, we get we got to the top of the food chain because. You know, no single human being could take down a woolly mammoth or or saber-toothed tiger. But when we became a herd, well, first we became tribes, and then we became herds, we were able to dominate the planet. So it's a good thing, but the bad thing of it is the herd can be led off a cliff, and that's what's happened. And so we use, you know, group pressure to influence people to jump off the cliff now. And that's why you have this cognitive dissonance. Yes, we can be rational, independent thinkers. But on the other hand, you know, the constant, endless propaganda, I, you know, I'm, I'm so shocked mm-hmm. at how much they are, uh, you know, trying to manipulate us. It's everywhere. I, I, yesterday, I, I rented a car to drive into the city to do some errands and there's giant signs on the highway saying, stay at home, wash your hands. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's so Orwellian, it's not even funny. Everywhere you go, there's a sign, get the, uh, get the vaccine, stay safe, social distance. I mean, you can't even go for a drive in your car without being in, bombarded with this propaganda. Mm-hmm. And to be honest with you, most people don't have enough of a filter to keep it all out. Mm-hmm. That's why I recommend just avoid exposure to it. Avoid exposure to TV and radio and magazines and movies. I mean, just turn it all off. Because even if you think you can, you know, it's it, it's like, well, you know, I can take some heroin. I won't become an addict. It won't bother me. No, no, no. Stay away from heroin right. altogether. Like, not even just a little bit. You can't even take a little bit of the stuff. Because it would permanently destroy your life and it's the same thing with media and tv and all that you know it's hard to turn it all off and god all, all, everybody with the smartphone you know you're done yeah you, no what's that expression you uh, give an inch and they'll take a yard so uh, if there is no pushback now can you imagine what society is going to look like uh, a year or two from now if they keep shoving this stuff down our throats one of the latest headlines here i'm not sure if you saw us here in the states uh, Rutgers, and I, I grew up in New Jersey, so I'm well aware of uh, Rutgers University. They're now requiring proof of the vaccine shot in order to even enroll in school. So uh, I reported upon this last year, too. It was University of Tennessee going in that direction. So uh, they're, they're going to try to funnel us out. We know it's going to get worse and worse. I mean, uh, probably over the next few years, you won't even be able to go into Walmart without proof of a vaccine. So I do think that our window of opportunity for prepping is uh, getting more narrow, uh, Stefan, but, um, even on like the church side of things. And I have been arguing and I take a lot of heat in the Catholic world because people have been following the Vatican, um, in uh, zombie like fashion. Uh, they're following along in, in false obedience. You just recently had Francis coming out indicating his support for the new world order. And where, where are most Catholics, you know, not even raising their voice at that. And I mean, it's just it's just craziness everywhere. You just can't avoid the craziness. And uh, could you provide, if you could, maybe some practical measures to co- combating it? I mean, like how when you see someone that's so just utterly nuts, um, like how how do you? I mean, what do you do in that conversation? You just kind of walk away from it. Do you just do you try to provide an alternative perspective and say, okay, like well, at least look into that. Like how do you? Uh, approach some of these people because I, I find you really can't talk you can't make much much sense of these people uh over the years um what do you what do you think uh Stefan? well uh, I, I recommend you use the same uh, strategy as if you were walking through the forest and suddenly there was a grizzly bear in the path <laughs> you know you you stop you slowly back away <laughs> <laughs> right 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 yeah. Once right, you've got right. enough distance, you run and you make sure you don't run into that bear again. Listen, there is no dealing with them. It, again, mass psychosis, it means that they are actually insane. You cannot say or reason or provide information or facts or uh, a reasonable argument. You can't. This will have no effect on them. They are insane. Listen, they are insane. How many times do I have to say that? <laughs> right. no, like it, it, it would be the, the same thing like you go to the, the local asylum and you find some guy that thinks he's Napoleon and you tell him, listen, you know, 
you can't be Napoleon because uh, Napoleon died, you know, 150 years ago. What's their response going to be? How dare you? I am Napoleon. How can you not see that I'm a Napoleon? You speak lies. You know, listen, this is what you're going to get with these people. You cannot reason with them. And that's why to survive mass psychosis. Um, yes, let's follow the advice of Fauci. Let's self-isolate. You have to stay away from them. <laughs> right. yeah. Now this, but this becomes problematic, and this doesn't actually, I really do agree with you, but remember going back to our, our web conference, we were talking about this uh, in regards to forming groups, and perhaps we can parlay uh, this into the, the next step or next area you wanted to go into in regards to some uh, practical measures and guides to forming communities, where in my own locale, I mean, maybe if I could find a half a dozen people that, that think sort of like me, that I'd be like, okay, like if I really start getting down to the nuts and bolts, could I trust that guy? Eh, you know, from scripture, we know not to trust anyone. I mean, I don't even trust myself, let alone really anyone else. But uh, you made the recommendation of really keeping it in the smaller groups because when push comes to shove and human nature takes over, you know, basically the larger your group is, the more, you know, the more apt is one person's going to call you out and then just kill the whole whatever militia, smaller group, whatever you want to call it. So I, I agree with you there. Uh, keeping in small packs, but like, how do you do that when you really can't find anyone in your own neck of the woods? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how do, how do you do that? You put out a Craigslist ad uh, so you could uh, maybe recruit some undercover FBI agents or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, this is this is the catch twenty two. You know, when I started writing the uh, uh, my my book on creating communities, it was because of my earlier article about the collapse of our coming civilization. According to the theory of historical cycles, we're in the collapse stage. And then I thought to research history and find out what did people do in the past when Rome collapsed? What did the surviving Romans do when the Chinese dynasties collapsed? What did the Chinese do to survive the era of chaos? And the answer was they formed communities. They took matters out of the hands of government and put it back in their own hands. Mm -hmm. And by forming communities, they were able to supply for them and their members all the services and support that was previously provided by governments. Okay, it makes sense. It's, it's the way to get through this. It's the way to build a better world. It's a way to fight this. But the psychopaths in charge have really screwed us mm -hmm. because they've driven everybody insane. Now, how can you form a community of insane people? Again, I go back to the analogy of uh, having my, my cats hooked up to the dog sled. Um, you can't. You can't form a community where the members are insane. You know, you can't go into an insane asylum and get them all to form into a debating society. It doesn't work. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, no, one of the principles here, uh, the seven guiding principles uh, to becoming uh, an eagle, and like I said, hopefully we'll be a Catholic uh, military order here uh, soon. I really shouldn't say hope. Uh, I, I know that we will be at a certain point. That's how nuts it's going to get. We'll, we'll get church approval for it. But one of the guiding principles is test before you trust, and it's uh, sort of a guiding principle to an actual eagle out in uh, you know the, the, the real world and the animal kingdom. Are there, are there any ways that we as human beings can test other people? before we allow them into our group. And I, I thought about that this morning a little bit. I like, I want to kind of like meditate a little bit more and from like a Christian perspective, maybe try to come up with some, uh, some, some things to do to test. But I mean, could you off the top of your head, throw anything at us that might stick uh, in this area, you know, testing people before you really trust them. That well, again, we ha we have a real difficulty with that because in order to detect psychopaths, because they're so, good at hiding and, and mm -hmm. hiding behind a false mask. They are very, very, very convincing. i am studied them for years and years. I'm, I have a very high IQ. I have excellent perception. Um, but I can't spot one off the bat. Well, in, in, in a few cases, you know, Kamala Harris and <laughs> O.C. and Chuck Schumer and all those. I mean, those guys are psychopaths. And, of course, his high lord and savior, Bill Gates, Oh, screams psychopath. Even a blind man can see that, that Bill Gates is a psychopath. But the the usual psychopaths that function in our society are very good at covering it up. The only way, and this was in my, my, my article on uh, defense against the psychopath, the best way to find out 
is over time. You have to observe their behavior over time and look for the tiny red flags that will pop up. Mm. And once you've got enough red flags, then you can determine that they're psychopaths. Here's the problem, though. We don't have time. Right. Yeah. I was going to say it could be too late. Yeah. It's going to be too late. You know, so you got six people. Let's say you got yeah six people to form a community. Now, ideally, you should be around them, you know, interacting with them for about six months looking for the telltale signs to see if they're a psychopath or if they're insane. And again, uh, if they're insane, they might not be a psychopath, but if they drank the Kool-Aid, if they drank from the well, um, they are a hazard to your organization because they will, they will destroy it one way or another. So how do you, how do you spend six months with all these people? I, I don't have an answer for that, to be honest with you, Mm. Eric. Um, in the book I have got, I've sketched out a couple of tests that you can put them through. And one of the tests is the psychopathy, psychopathy um, uh, 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 point system where you ask them to take a test that uh, was devised by Robert Hare to determine if a person is a psychopath. Now, you don't tell them that it's a psychopathy test. You tell them it's a personality test, you know, to see if, if you're compatible to the group ideals. But I would recommend number one, and I've got this in my, it's going to be in the book, um, give them the test, you know, ask them to say, in order to join our group, we need, you know, we need some background and information. And then I include in the background information, a number of different forms that I would recommend people have their members fill out. One of the forms is like a medical form, like, do you have history of uh, heart disease or diabetes or uh, panic attacks and things like that, so that as a group we are prepared to deal with it and offer you, you know, uh, uh, remedies and solutions and, you know, that we can help you with these medical problems if you join our group. For example, I don't want some guys to join my, uh, uh, my outward bound group that has a heart disease and then we're 50 miles in the bush and he has a heart attack. Mm. I need to know that ahead of time so we can prepare and, and, and be able to take care of those situations. Mm. So one of the things I recommend is having members fill out these forms. One is a medical form. Another one is a skills and knowledge form. Like, what are you good at? You know, give me the top five things that you're really good at. Cooking, Making macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese. <laughs> but that that's a valuable skill. You know, you can yeah. use that, you know, so long as they have something, but it, it will give you an idea of what they're good at. Um, you know, torturing kittens. No, not a great skill. Right, right, right. Right. <laughs> and then the third test I recommend is giving them the, the psychopathic checklist whereby, uh, you know, so again, none of these are foolproof, mm-hmm. but it will give you an opportunity to see, wow, this guy scored really high on the second <laughs> test. You know? And of course, they don't know they're taking that test, and a lot of the psychopaths will know how to, how to fake those answers. They'll smell sure. it, mm-hmm. right? They'll know how to fake it. But they might not be able to fake all the answers. And that's where, you know, if the facts <laughs> come up on the psychopath checklist, uh, maybe you don't want them in your group. So those are the, you know, but it's it's a really, it's a troublesome thing. You see, The way our ancestors were able to overcome this is because they grew up in the same town. They went to the same schools. They knew the families. They knew their neighbors. They knew their neighbors' grandparents. They knew all the people in the area. They lived with them. They, you know, they were spent a lot of time with each other and they got to know each other. So it was possible when the society collapsed for them to form a community because they already knew each other. They've lived side by side for dozens and dozens of years. Our society, because the, the communists are so excellent at destroying civilization, they have ensured that we don't know anybody. I don't know who my neighbors are. When I was a kid, everybody knew everybody. Mm. You know, We knew all the neighbors. We mm-hmm. were at their house. You know, uh, Nobody ever locked the door, so if you ever lost or scared or got injured, you fell down, you hurt your knee, you'd knock on, you know, the next door neighbor, they would, you know, the mother would always be home. She'd bring out the first aid kit, fix up your knee for you, you know. Nowadays, I don't know anybody. I don't know my neighbors. I don't know my community. I don't know anyone around me. So how can I trust them? 
the pandemic of uh, paranoia, right, with these 1-800 snitches and snoops hotlines, uh, people uh, looking at their neighbor like, you know, who, you know, who are those people? Uh, I mean, it even happens here. We've got pretty, I'd say pretty strong Christian commute up here, but I, I, I've noticed that over the past year, even ever since uh, COVID, uh, there's not, there's not as much interaction. Um, and, you know, it'd be more like barbecues you'd see going on more people, you know, exchanging gifts or apple pie. Like, I don't, I don't see much of that going on uh, anymore. You know what I mean? It's, it's really, uh, it's really taking its effect here, but I'm right there with you, man. This is uh it's crazy times, crazy times, crazy people. <laughs> and this is why we argue from the from the Christian standpoint that the only way that society can lose the psychos is through divine intervention. I, I, there's nothing. All we could do is survive the Antichrist Hunger Games, I argue. Uh, kind of like that movie Red Dawn, rolling in smaller packs uh, and then just trying to get through this. But I, there's no way that we're, you know, we as a, a humanity are going to defeat them. It's just like it's over. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. there's no way we could get it back. Well, again, and that paranoia, that's part of the communist manifesto. This is what happens in communist countries. Everybody's an informant. Everybody's paranoid. Everybody's snitching. So this is the problem, you know, and this this pandemic is an excuse to implement this communist paranoia. And, uh, you know, the key lesson from the movie Red Dawn was, yeah, they had a small group, but guess what? They were betrayed by one of their own members. Remember? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, that story with uh, Jesus and Judas. Yeah, that always happens like that. Even even the movie uh, Donnie Brasco was on the other day, right? That FBI agent had to acclimate himself into the mob, and the mob was totally shocked uh, that Donnie was, uh, you know, an inside uh, an inside guy from like the FBI or whatnot. I mean, it's like you just never know, uh, I guess. So, um, yeah, I don't know, Stefan. Very. Very, very interesting conversation today. We only got a few minutes left, and perhaps we could pick back up on this uh, next month, uh, some more guides to forming uh, communities, uh, the different areas uh, in regards to tactics. And uh, I know we've already discussed uh, code words uh, before several times, but maybe we can get into some other areas. But before we let you go, we got to get into some parting words, some shameless self-promotion time, uh, Stefan, and we'll, we'll get you scheduled for next month too as well. Okay, Eric. So uh, all my stuff more or less is on my Website www.chinastrategies.com. And um, at the end of the month, I'm going to have to raise the price on my survival library. This this COVID thing has uh, devastated me financially, as it has many people. And I can no longer offer it at the extremely low rate. Now, the survival library is all my books in PDF, plus an additional 280 plus books on all facets of survival and homesteading and so on. Uh, I know other websites sell a collection like that, but they they charge 150 bucks for it. I've been charging $40 for it, but it's got to go up. I'm going to raise it to $50 at the end of the month. So okay. the survival library, get it now at, at the reduced rate because next month I got to raise it because I, I can't survive on what I'm making anymore, you know. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's tough times, no doubt about it. And certainly censorship is uh, not helping out, limiting more opportunities uh, for people like you and I to go out and do media appearances and then actually stick. As a matter of fact, uh, some of my last media appearances have just been erased off of YouTube. So, uh, yeah. yeah, we got to we gotta continue to support uh, our guests, continue to support. Uh, and I, I keep saying this even on my end, too, uh, with uh, the people who uh, will, will donate and help out. Um, you know, I can't do this work full time without their uh, assistance. So we've got... Uh, a good group here at Track at Night that likes to uh, be charitable. So uh, do get on over to China Strategies and, and pick up um, pick up uh, Stefan's work. Uh, Stefan, anything else before we let you go? Um, also, I'm doing consulting now. I, it's it's really starting to pick up. So if you want to talk to somebody that gets it, you know, and even if you don't want advice on, because I'm offering it on preparedness consulting. But uh, actually, half of my uh, clients just want to talk to somebody that's normal. So <laughs> right, yeah, like therapy. <laughs> well, you know, it's not. You know, I'm I'm not doing a life coach or anything like that. I hate that that whole concept, of life coaching. All that. <laughs> right, right, right. But um, you know, we're all so separated and isolated, and we mm-hmm. think we're the crazy ones because the whole world's gone crazy and they're all drank from the well. But listen, if you want to talk to somebody that gets you and understands where you're coming from, and just to make you feel better, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, go go to my website. It's under preparedness consulting, but 
whatever you want to talk about, we'll talk about. Yeah, good stuff, buddy. Appreciate the time. Uh, hang off air here. We'll get you scheduled for next month. And folks, in conclusion here, don't forget about the Tran Cat Night Marie Jolie Jahani movie on Vimeo, Vimeo.com. Type in Three Days of Dark. Just check it on out. Don't forget about any of our past web conferences. You now can pick up all seven of them for a $25 gift donation. Don't forget to search Tran Cat Night across all social media. I think I'm on most of them now. I don't know. I'm trying to keep up with them all. And uh, don't forget there are gift subscriptions available to Tran Cat Night. So <clears throat> I challenge everyone. We know one person out there. That that's sort of on the fence, who's sort of breaking free from the the, 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 the zombie-like state that the world has fallen into, uh, get them a gift subscription. Have them check out Trad Cat Night for a month, and uh, hopefully they'll join us for the long haul. And we now have to get ready for John Potash, <clears throat> who's an author. And uh, we're going to be breaking down uh, current events and a few other things he wants to talk about. But, folks, until next time, stay safe and God bless.